everyone, welcome to our holiday party. And since none of you are driving, we're okay with any of you sitting back with a drink of some form. Larry, you're being one, even some snacks. And as you settle down to watch our unique painting demonstration, I think you'll like it. I trust that most of you have viewed our 36th annual Fall Aquavision juried show and enjoyed seeing the wide range of paintings. That show runs until February 3rd. Uh, with the resurgence of the pandemic, I think we can anticipate the spring show will be online also, which I think has the upside that more paintings can be included. As recently noted by uh, email, our workshops fill up quickly now, and I hope for those of you who do not get in, that there are other artist offerings that you can choose from. We'll be looking into how we can expand our workshop offerings, uh, noting that a lot of time and effort goes into coordinating these. So the painting demonstration by the three members here is all about the celebration of painting. It's to provide an engaging and entertaining experience for the viewers. The intent is not necessarily to pr produce a painting, but rather provide an insight into each artist's approach to painting. We will be observing all three painters simultaneously over a period of 45 minutes with an accompanying discussion by two commentators who will be watching as, as we do, how each art or artist pro progresses. The administrator will be rotating the screen view sequentially between the three artists in two to three minute segments. And we'll see how that goes. Uh, and that means that while all three artists commence their painting, only one will be shown at a time. Then the administrator will change the screen to view the second painter. And after two to three minutes, bring up the third painter. And after that, the administrator will bring up the first painter again and repeat the time sequence on and on. That way the viewers will watch the development of three paintings, each unique and engaging for different reasons and appeal. The painters do not need to talk since the two commentators will provide a running dialogue on what they are seeing and how the techniques vary. The demonstration will be recorded for future viewing by anyone posted to our website in case there are members who cannot see it in real time and for friends subsequently enjoying watching their favorite artists. I will now introduce the three artists who will appear in this order. Barbara Gucci, uh, Sim Wong, Bonnie Steinberg, and the two commentators for tonight are Peter Marsh and Rain Tunley. So I'll now turn the screen and the talking over to both Peter and Rain to let them explain how they'll approach the painting demonstration. Take it away. Okay, hello again, yeah. everyone. Um, yeah, uh, it's really nice to, to see you all. It's almost in person, but, but really, really nice to see you. Um, basically, we've approached each of the artists prior to this event to discuss their philosophies and uh, their approach to their painting. Uh, this way, it enables us uh, the best possible way to give them our support during their demos. This is all about the celebration of each individual artist who's demoing, but also each of us and our individualities and uh, our own different approaches. We can always learn from each other. And uh, it, it is, uh, and it's, this is going to be exciting. We've been looking forward to it. And uh, over to you, Peter, for, for your hello. Uh, yes, well, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm very excited about this, actually. I've, I've never done this before. So keep that in mind when you're listening to Rain and I. We, had little chats before we did this and said, are we going to be okay? And we said, yes, we're going to be fine. We're going to be good. And uh, you have to think on your feet. Uh, and I was thinking just now, this is sort of like going plein air painting. I mean, there's a heck of a lot of us tonight, but the, the great thing about plein air painting is you, you get the support from all the artists around you. So we're looking forward to giving support and having a good time and, and trying our best to, um, give at least some interpretation of what's happening. And I'm, I'm sure 
one of the reasons I'm excited is I'm going to learn something because I'm going to watch somebody else paint. And you do get in these sort of ruts when you paint that you think, I'm going to try something new, but you always end up painting the same way you always have. So I'm excited to see how the artists proceed and to learn something myself. And hopefully we'll all do that. So shall we uh, take off here? Hi, everyone. Happy yeah, holiday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, Barbara. Hi, hi. So... I'm sure you're going to be great, Bob. I know we're all sort of, you know, thinking, oh, how am I going to do? But you're going to be great. Oh, yeah. And you still you. have that broken finger. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take it off. It feels better sometimes when it's off. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a, a quick value sketch that I did of the painting that I'm hopefully going to try and speedily go through. Um, and then I did a, a massing study. So it's a winter scene and it's kind of typical of what I do in terms of geometry and then just more of the uh, darks and lights and mid-tones and big shapes. And then these are the colors that I'm hoping to, to use. Wow, nice. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful shapes. It's interesting to see uh that this artist, I wonder if all of them this evening do sketches. I mean, when you go to art school, they always say, oh, your sketchbook is the most important. I wanna see your sketchbook at the end of term. And, yeah. and I've never been, been one to do a lot of sketching before I start a painting, except to put in a few guidelines with a pencil. So it's interesting to see. That, Very um, interesting. Barbara likes to do these value sketches she was saying. And, but, but look at what she's doing here. Uh, in, in her preparation, she, Barbara loves the white. She loves the white of the paper. Uh, and she, uh, this one thing she specifically was talking about to us and she masks out with paper, but also with uh, tape before she starts to save the white space, white shapes rather. Well, there she we starts all... nice wet and wet here. We've all learned something already. I never do that. <laughs> so it's, like, it's pretty cool. It's, it, it, looks, it looks like the painting's been started, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. Then what's quite, cool. I think what's start... neat is that you can see the rhythm, the rhythm of where some of these uh, the shapes. Is. So it, it's almost like a negative, isn't it, when you were yeah. looking through this? Yeah. Yeah, you can see the, see the if I had my mouse here, I'd be... <laughs> but yeah. no, you can see where her brush is going now. You can see the rhythm moving through. And then when her wet and wet, she's she's uh, looks like she's working with rhythm with uh, the the blues and the the uh, warm colors, warm yellows as well. She Just loves stand color. up. <laughs> I'm used to standing up painting. <laughs> Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, I do that too. I, I stand up and then sometimes I end up putting it on the easel because I like the drips and so right, on. Right, right. Yeah. Some, some Barbara artists. loves lush color. It's going to be interesting to see how it moves. moves. Sorry, Peter. Um, a sign just came up on my screen saying your network bandwidth is low. <laughs> so if I disappear, I'll have to try and do something about I've never, ne I've never seen that on my screen before. I, I was noticing there that uh, Bob lets the watercolor do the work to a certain extent. You know, some artists put are very careful, you know, to clean off their brush exactly and, and just put a specific color down in one place. And then I see uh, the, the, sim the, the, now. The, the water is spreading the color and mixing without doing it on the palette. So that's kind of interesting. Hi, Sim, how are you? She, well, actually her voice is off, but uh, you know, we, we also spoke with uh, Sim and she, she mainly paints uh, birds and flowers. And uh, she said this evening, her demo is going to be on roses. And uh, she likes to, uh, to use a lot of water, which will start to see some of that mingling that Peter was talking about. Yes. And Sim is another artist who lets the, the watercolor do the work in the water while she's painting. So I, I remember reading yeah. 
about she likes to put the colors in and let them do the work on the paper rather than do a lot of palette mixing, which is which is interesting because I'm, you know, when I'm painting, I guess a lot of people are the same. I, I mix the color on the palette a lot of the time. Yeah, and, I sometimes uh, I let the colors mix right on the paper in the water, which is kind of fun if there's a lot of water, the pigments can roll around. And, there, and there's a lot of difference, isn't there, between being representational and trying to get every detail and, and when it comes to the color mixing, mixing a particular color because that's what it is in reality. And then other artists uh, let, let the color do what it wants to do in the water and the result is the result. It, it, uh, it doesn't have any relationship necessarily to the exactness of reality. We, we, get, we get a lovely mixture of color that's the artist's choice is, is is just an interpretation of a subject. Mm. You know so, what I like about uh, mixing uh, the colors either on the palette or, or right on the watercolor paper um, is, you know, if you study the pigments themselves, some of them are ground up. And if you had a microscope, you could see all of these little fine particles uh, floating in the water. And some of them are dyes. And then, uh, of course, they'll float. But what I really enjoy is uh, the, the paint that has the pigments that float in the water because some of them actually physically repel each other. And, and then you get quite astonished as to what kind of textures start to create just by letting the paint uh, uh, play with itself. And the more you want to know about the pigments and the pigment characteristics, the more you know what they're going to do ahead of the time. This is what Sim was saying. She usually starts with the roses and paints with few layers very softly. So it's going to be fun to see how she develops this. I always think of a bird painting down Queen Street there. That was a beautiful painting of softness. Wasn't that sort beautiful? Sort of very diac poetic. diaphanous, like looking through a, a soft frosted glass. And, yeah. Uh, and the image coming through, but but not glaring at you. It's very 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 soft finish. It's yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So she she uses like with uh, these colors for her roses. She's explaining that she uses Indian yellow, quinacridone, red light, and uh, permanent rose and alizarin crimson. Ah, here we go. We have Bonnie. Hello, Bonnie. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Oh, yes. Right. It's, it's interesting when I, uh, I phoned Bonnie uh, to speak with her, she, she uh, was out there uh, around the junction, wasn't it the junction you were walking around with your camera? Yeah. And yeah, and Bonnie was saying how much she just loves to take photographs all the time, photographs for reference material. Yep. Um, well, so tonight what I have are two. Now, this is a little unusual because this is a watercolor on gouached watercolor paper. This is on Bristol plate or plate Bristol, actually. <clears throat> and um, the surface is covered in gouache and then I'm painting on top. So it's not a true, true watercolor. I guess it's a um, mixed medium. Yeah, it would be. And uh, this is uh, one that I did. It's actually on my Facebook page. And then I have this one, which is, so there's that, and I can start this one, but I wanted to show you um, this one. This was in the show, this is the one that's in the show right here. And this is, this is yeah. So I took Beautiful. a phrase of these pictures and I have another one here, and this is in fall. If I like something, I might paint it in four seasons. And I love the way the light changes. And this was done just a couple of weeks ago, just before the leaves, you know, fell off the trees. And so I have this one, and this is what I was starting. And it's right here. So this is still a little wet. I don't know. Um, which one should I start first? I don't know. I can start. <laughs> what do you think? Should I start with this one, maybe? Sure, that looks good. It looks like this morning with the snow. 
Yeah, well, it, yeah. At this, I don't know how far I'm going to get with two, but I didn't know which one to do, so I said, okay, I'll do both. So there's the painting. There's my reference, and it's nothing like the painting because I never copy it anyway. And I put in quite a bit of snow on here and a lot of snow shadow. And so um, do you want to know the colors I'm using or not? I don't know if you... I think sometimes people like to know, yeah. Okay, so I Don't am... take too long, Bonnie, because we're going to switch in a minute. Oh, ah. well, well, so we'll leave, we'll leave that to the questions at the end then. Okay, so do you want me to just start painting? Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, okay, no problem. So there we have a little sketch to start from. And I, the one thing I noted when I was taking a look at Bonnie's work today, the one thing I noted uh, that I thought was uh, in some ways different than the other artists will look at this, there's, there's a very definite attention to depth on depth on depth on depth. Like the, the thing um, is, is like there's a tree then there's a house, then there's some trees in behind, and then there's some clouds in behind that. It's it's a layered yeah, type, type of depth that's, that's yeah, um, quite interesting. Now, now here's Barbara's uh, painting developing, and we can see some of those uh, shapes, those uh, shapes that we've seen with the masking tape, you know, the, the rectangular type of shape starting to show up with her brushwork, with the, with the golden, yellow ochre type of Well, you, you'd thing. really you'd really have to remember what you're doing, eh, Rain? Oh, yeah, for <laughs> when sure. When you look at that, you think, oh, what is that? That's a that's a bunch of color all over the place. Yeah. What, what is going still on there? Has, it still has rhythm, doesn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. It looks, yeah. you know, very abstract, right, at the present time. It's, it's, yeah, I'm uh, enjoying it the way it is now, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, you can see a little bit of shine with that paper. It's really juicy, wet. Juicy, yeah. juicy brushes and uh, ah, beauty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I gotta try that. I gotta get myself a roll of tape like that. I said I was it. gonna have fun, so <laughs> <laughs> well, they, oh, it's looking cool. It's We're having fun too, Barbara. <laughs> this is great. Good, good, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when have I you, look at, have you, sorry, Peter, you have, I was gonna say, when I look at uh. The work in shows. Yeah. When Bar Bob's paintings in shows, uh, they look. When I when I made the comment, well, look, you'd have to remember what you're looking at here. When I look at a work in shows, very clean and crisp. It's um, the whole scene is there, uh, but you have to sort of fill in the blanks a bit. Yeah. With, with the way yeah. the subject is rendered, and I think, well, right now, it it looks like well i'm not quite sure like a big abstract but uh but in the end it it's gonna it's gonna look very um considered it's, gonna be, it's, going, be it's gonna be very you're gonna know it. what it is exactly yeah it's very Do you know what is uh, interesting too is the type of uh tape that she's using this is that uh, very low tack uh, yeah. uh masking tape you can also yeah. get now, very, well, maybe for a little while, the very low tack frog tape, and it's yellow. And I think that it would be kind of neat if you could find a, a neutral, uh, but I haven't been able to find a neutral low tack masking tape. So this is the, I think the yellow would uh, play, play with your mind a little bit when you're playing with the paints like this. Yeah, you have to sort of be free in your mind to be creative too, right? I mean, yeah. Um, Bonnie was saying, well, she takes photographs, but she does her own version of it. And I think, yeah, you have to, yeah, you have to be free to know, you know, what the image is going to be like, but you just be creative with it. You, you, you don't. Yeah. One thing you don't have to do is never worry when you're painting about what somebody else is going to think about it. Like, like paint for yourself. I, I would say that you know what that very... is that is a very strong Good statement point. peter because a lot of times i think up oh, pe people are this, this is lovely she's now gone into the leaves and working around uh painting with some of those negative shapes and negative shapes as we know create positive shapes and uh beautiful nice nice fresh greens 
uh, let's see, I'm just going to let you know what type of greens that Sim likes to use are. She uses the quinacridone, quinacridone gold, viridian green, and viridian green lifts beautifully. Uh, shadow green, which is a Daniel Smith product, and leaf green, which is a, a Da Vinci product. I remember reading some guy who said, for artists, green is the most difficult color. I've never forgotten that because yeah. anytime you're painting something in green, you look at it and you think, is that right? Is that right? And in the end, you, you have to ask yourself, well, does it fit into the painting nicely? I, yeah, I, it, you know, it doesn't. It's true. My mother used to always say, my mother always used to say, <laughs> green <laughs> yes. is. But, and so in Ireland, that's the place to go if you really want to play with the greens. But you know, mm. what Sim was doing there is quite interesting. You're saying, um, Peter, about having it work within the rest of the painting. Like if you really look at some of these flowers that you're painting and then the greens that are within the leaves and the stems, you will see that those same greens are found in the flower and the same colors of the flower are found in the greens. And that's a good way of tying your, your colors together as well. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of noting here that when Sim started that first rose, we're all aware of which one that is. And I think, look at that, it's, it's smack on that uh, dynamic point of one third to two thirds. It almost is, isn't it? The golden, the golden mean, yeah. And so then, yeah. As she paints, it's a matter of maintaining that major dynamic point, and then finding other places for the eye to go without, without taking away from the main point, but making interesting no matter where your eye wanders on the painting. Art. I'm interested to see how she will control that as she paints because it's it's a sort of a crucial matter in a really nice finished piece. Is where where did you put the pieces? I wanted to show you. So I don't know if you see mine at all, but um, can you see my little image there in my small thumbnail? Um, this is what Peter's talking about too. Is the the golden mean the the rule of thirds? And so what I've done, in, in what helps me in my painting, and that would do the same with Bonnie's too, um, is to to draw this golden mean on a on a piece of acetate, and then you can hold it up in front of your painting, and yeah. uh, it can help you with. And of course, you can turn it vertically, turn it horizontally, upside down, every which way because your painting should work every which way that you turn it. Here's anyway, Bonnie that, again. That, yeah. Bonnie, Bonnie I had a, says, look. We had a quick question for Bonnie if she can talk and paint about what she likes about using gouache on Bristol plate. Uh, the effect, it gives an incredible effect. I think it's very creamy. It's almost like well painting at the end, but it is a watercolor. And also, I don't use it all the time, but I use it you know, from time to time. I did it with a whole bunch of different paintings this year with uh, some architecture. I did it with landscape, um, some people, some figurative stuff. Um, what else? And uh, I, that's something I'm teaching as well. So it's kind of, it's just interesting. What do I like about it? It's challenging. You know, uh, at first this stuff is going to come off, but look at the effect you get, eh? You get this nice very soft, very ethereal effect. I, I just like it. I don't know. Well, what, what, I'm, what I'm noticing is uh, Bonnie has hardly started. I mean, she's into it a bit. But there's already, for me, a whole bunch of different layers, like I was mentioning before. I, I can see, well, some things are close and some things a little bit further out. And then the blue to take it way back. You know, if you ever want to take something way back in your painting you put that blue in it and then you'll get that sort of atmospheric aerial perspective as things go away and if you're interested in color they they get grayed down chromatically and they and they get bluer because 
that end of the spectrum is scattered by the atmosphere. And you can see on a painting, the purple one, the purple thing looks closer and the blue thing looks further away. And, and we haven't even dealt with the foreground yet. And we've already got probably six different layers in those, those lovely little brush strokes in the background. Yeah, it, uh, it's true. Bonnie, it looks like the, the paint just f is, is sort of floats on the surface. Is that oh, what yeah. the... Yeah, it does, um, yeah. 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 And this would be a place where you would see a lot of, like when I was talking about the, the individual pigments, there you go, she's lifting, see that? Um, some of the pigments that, uh, you know, move around within the water itself. You, you would Whoa. get a little bit of that happening here too. Yeah. You know, um, Bonnie uh, has uh, has been given a very prestigious award in the Toronto yeah. Star. Yeah, the Reader's Choice Awards for a Diamond Award for the best art instructor in Ontario. <laughs> it's great. Congratulations, it's, Bonnie. That's, that's really wonderful. nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's great. It's, very strong accolades. She, she teaches at all over the place and at the Dundas Valley School of Art. And uh, yeah, look her up. Oh, Bob. oh, Barbara! Wow, <laughs> you took some of the blue off. Whoa, yeah. look at that! Look at this. This is beautiful. Oh, and see, this is the paper she was talking about. How she sticks mm. paper down. That's just a from the, the edge of a note paper, it looks like. Yeah, that's right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Now, do you, do, you, do you let it dry and then put another layer of paper on? Uh, sometimes, usually I only have one layer of paper or end tape, but uh, this time I have a couple of, of layers. Right, interesting, wow. Yeah. It gives this you is a, nice and magical seeing this coming coming together. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, Barbara, you, um, like the edges of the, the paper are not s square. So do you incorporate that a little bit in, within uh, the, uh, the yeah. format? Yeah. So some, sometimes be... the, the thing that I like about this tape is that it's really easy to get a nice kind of uh, torn edge if you can yeah. see on this tree. And you can get nice straight edges for the architecture as well. Yeah, so that's yeah. Why I like this uh, masking tape. I like that tape too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. They don't carry this one anymore. I think it's changed to a different. Uh, oh different... no! I've still got. I've got a whole bunch left. Well, I, I know hoarded. Where to I hoarded. <laughs> Good. I know where to come now. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well then yeah, I guess your the other tape is that other frog tape I was yeah, telling you about tape. but it's yellow it's sort of yellow in color yeah actually I like the blue because it um it allows you to kind of figure out where the mask or the heavy shapes are in your painting yeah. now are you scratching the paper a little bit or is this just slightly going underneath oh uh, it's just going underneath it might okay. scratch it a bit but and then you let that incorporate into your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's amazing, you know, I get a little dark at the very beginning, but um, it's nice to be able to keep the white. And then I just keep putting the, the, the mat over top to figure out where more of the tone should be. So that's yeah. kind of an abstract right now. In instructors will tell you a, a lot of the time, you know, the most important thing in a painting is composition. And, we, and we've run into that, as far as I can see, three times tonight. And here we are at it again. If you look at it, you, th you think, okay, now there's that major tree on the left. And, and the base of that tree is very close to sort of one thirds, two thirds. Yeah, and yeah. then that blue tree, <laughs> well, it's not blue, it's the tape, I guess. But but anyway, that, that tree on the right is sort of one thirds, two thirds the other way. So then it's sort of a bit of a toss up, which is what I was talking about before. You make a major dynamic point and then you're going to control it. So at, at the present time, you couldn't say with certainty which one is the major dynamic point because there's two really interesting places to go 
And it's going to be interesting to see where is this painting going to go <laughs> as, as Barb works on it, because it, it, the composition is already there. The structure is already there for a great composition. Oh, uh, look at oh. here's, here's Sims now back to, okay, this is a, this is coming along beautifully. You can see the, wow. the nice lush, uh, the nice lush dark starting to, to develop and look how they pop out the beautiful, the beautiful soft roses. So you've got a nice contrast between the soft edges and the harder edges, but it doesn't look like the edges are, are hard at all. I, I think her her image is frozen on us a little bit. Hey, Sim, you can send that to me for Christmas. Um, the image is working okay on my end. <laughs> is it? Okay. <laughs> That's a beauty. That, that is Yeah, really... I can't. I just see a frozen image right now. And the white is playing a major part here, isn't it? It's... Um... But it's mm -hmm. so different than the major part that's being played by white in, in Bob's piece. I mean, the, the white is pushing those roses right at you so beautifully. You and know then, what's nice too, Peter, you were talking about composition and uh, you've got a beautiful lead in at the bottom uh, bottom yeah. right third yeah. almost yeah. moving Very, in and yeah. I like to talk about rhythm because your eye gets excited about the rhythm of lights and darks and and moving through and this is what I'm seeing coming in that uh, lead in and then rhythming uh, towards the top right through the through those darks I like, think you're and, right uh, yeah weaving in in a lot of ways now I her image is frozen on my screen, so I, I I'm not seeing what she's painting. Well, I, what you're talking about now, as Sim puts in dark color, I call that punctuation. So the, the darks are sort of like the um, commas and periods and exclamation yeah. marks on a on a page of words it's a they there don't you go. occur you're, because in, you're a, an excellent writer i can see you think like thinking of it that way yeah it's it there's yeah. a rhythm to it there's a rhythm yeah. to it that you, you that yeah. you were mentioning there there's a rhythm to your painting yeah. and you watch what dances through it and right now those and that's what I, li I like, and I don't do the commas and the periods and things, but I do the, the weaving. And so that works for me. You know, sometimes it weaves in a little bit deeper and then comes back out. It, it, and, and it's too about lost and found, lost and yep. found uh, uh, Edu rhythm. Yeah. I hope yeah, it's that amazing. I get... and, and, and you know what you have to do when you, when you do it? They, they say, actually... Well, I say for sure, you can't see what you're doing till you stand ten feet back from your work. Isn't that and, the truth? Yeah, and and yeah. when you're doing that punctuation stuff there, if you get back and take a look, you can actually see what you're doing in a way that you cannot see when your nose is next to your brush. Okay, so um, Heather, yeah, I I am seeing movement in this one. So for some reason, the last one froze, but. Uh, yeah, so Bonnie's now developing, going into uh, into some nice, uh, more darks. Like so, we're again we think in watercolor, working lights to darks as a general rule. Um, often we break the rules and then go uh, from light to dark. I mean, I mean dark to light. Uh, just to give us give us something to anchor us. If we're if sometimes when you're working light to dark. Your work uh, stays on the very light, uh, high, the high key scale. And if you wanted, to, sometimes you have to shock your eye a little bit to go and to, uh, to work out some of the contrasts. I think a lot of the time, the way to solve that for yourself is when you first get going, you, know, you put in a few colors, put in something dark. And yeah. then for, for, for it to look right, you will have to adjust everything else. Everything, right. yeah, and you know, that's true. It's all about uh, talking to your, and listening to your painting. So when you're yeah. painting, you're talking to it. When you stand back, you're listening to it. And uh, it, it is very important. When I'm doing portraits, I uh, will 
put in the uh, like the eyes make them a little stronger and and sometimes they look like the 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 portrait is staring directly back at you and then you then you listen to it and it's and then it softens as you go starts and to you've also got, so you look for you, balance yeah you've also got the advantage if you don't get the eyes right the rest of it's not worth doing <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth eh? yeah, yeah. it's all yeah. about getting those eyes right so if one's not yeah. looking one way and then one another way yeah look at that that's coming this now. is see gorgeous. the layers the layers so what do i got yeah. one, one one two three four, four five, five six i can see oh and then the big trees on the right seven so it marches back there through the bush yeah. it's, it's going to be great yeah i like uh you know and if you're watching how bonnie's uh holding her brush too like she's she's you can yeah. tell just by the way she's holding her brush that she's moving um from her shoulder as she's painting which is what's giving her a nice beautiful controlled freedom you know the the brush being an extension of the arm rotating yeah, it gives from it the, the shoulder it gives yeah. it a character, doesn't it? Like you can yeah. you can say you want to paint like somebody else, but just try it. You can. You have a rhythm of your own. You have yeah. movements of your own, and when you hold that brush like that, it's it's always going to look like a Bonnie Steinberg. It's 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 not going to look like you know a piece that somebody else painted. It's a matter of the rhythm of your body getting into your work. Look at oh, that. There she's coming along. Look at, yeah, and these uh, these very geometric <laughs> shapes are starting to. Uh, yeah, here comes some more yeah. punctuation. Now, look she, at you that. can tell Whoa. Barbara also paints from her shoulder, too. You know, there's, yeah. and so you can see how she's holding her wrist, too, to yeah. just give her a little bit of control up yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's nice. That's Look really nice. At that. Barbara that does a lot that. of uh, urban sketching, part of the urban sketchers group, and she's out there. We're, and you can tell her uh, her uh, architectural background when she's working with all of these. That's, uh, I mean, plein air painting is great, but uh, but but hasn't it been the <laughs> sort of solace of being in this uh, COVID? virus oh, thing we yeah. can all go out and paint together and that's that's a That'll beauty, be nice oh, you, you, you'll have to laugh at this i remember uh when we were in avignon peter and yes. uh you were out in on that on the on the camargue which is yeah. very windy on, on the <laughs> yes. ocean and here's yes. peter standing out in the windiest place that you could possibly imagine holding on to his it is paint, painting like there yeah. was no tomorrow. All I yeah. could do is laugh. And then I found a place to sit and I got eaten alive. So I shouldn't have laughed. But look at this. It's like, see the, the dancing strokes as she's going going through. And that's that's unifying to the painting. And you can see as the, the working on the top third as well. Yeah, I, I find it very exciting. This is I, I see, I see a piece of blue blue tape down in the bottom left corner there. I don't know. It's not finished. It's yeah. obviously not finished. There's a piece of tape still. Left <laughs> I always leave a couple pieces. <laughs> I I just love this because it it grows like topsy. It's like yeah, I'll put a bit of this here, put a bit of that there. It's a very architectural, yeah. very nice in that respect, isn't it? But it's um. Yeah. You know how Rudy yep. Stuzzi, who knows Rudy Stuzzi, he, he twists yeah. buildings like crazy. And it has sort of a lovely topsy-turvy character that gives it life, I think. It, it makes it very exciting to look at. You know, the other thing that Barbara is doing here is painting the whole. Like, you, you know, working the whole yeah. painting and bringing it together rather than a, one area, and which some people do. And, you know, basically, there, there are no rules, like, um, for us to have to follow. But she works, um, and then around the whole painting, and then it evolves at once. So I got a question, Bob. Do you, do you take your work and and stand it on the back of the couch and walk walk by it uh, oh. day after day, trying to decide, is this good or is it like 
finished or? I don't do know. I, if, I don't know if they're ever finished. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I know keep, that feeling. I keep playing with them. <laughs> but that's an important point, isn't it? To watercolor painting, don't overpaint it, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, I know for sure. And that's so yeah, and when you overpaint it, sometimes it starts to get muddy. But a good trick when it gets muddy is to really study that mud. And if it's leaning towards the yellow, put a pure purple nearby. Oh. If it's leaning towards the, the muddy Ooh. red, put a pure green beside it. And it'll make the color start to come alive again. Look at that. There's a Isn't that beautiful? Humming bird coming down. Oh, wait a minute. Am, are we on Sims now? Yeah. I can't see Sims. I wonder why that is. I don't know. I'm still looking at Barbara's. Okay, well, I'll tell, I'll describe for you in the lovely okay. open space, could sort of compositional white to the right of the painting. Sim is gently adding another sort of diaphanous image there of a hummingbird. Very oh, soft. I wish I could see Just an this. indication. It's one of those things where it's different than Barbie Gucci's, but you, your mind sort of fills in the details a little bit. It's not I'm like it's, photo, it's not like it's photographic. Yeah. Just see if you can scroll through the little um, hey, film strip that. images. Yeah, yeah I, I'm find. just starting to do that. I'm looking yeah. for, yeah, because it's it, it'd be nice to see it. Um, yeah, these little birds are so exciting. I wonder if I can in make a, that. In a uh, painting, I was watching the uh, the nuthatch and the chickadee out on the bird feed today, and they 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 provide such life to a composition if you can. Look at that, a lovely little touch. Just, oh, a, just to. put a little bit of punctuation on one wing, but just enough that your mind will fill in the rest. Which That's an amazing thing about your mind and an important thing to remember in watercolor painting, that you, the details are nice, but there's no need to get photographic. Your, your mind will fill in the other pieces that you haven't necessarily included. No, um, you know what? I just haven't, I just don't have the ability to, to see Sim's uh, work here. Well, I have to tell you, it's beautiful. <laughs> yes, just like the <laughs> other you, two Peter. pieces, it's very beautiful. Yeah. So and, can uh, I just say something? Um, yes. this, is, this is fascinating to be watching this. And I, I, I just like to know whether the three artists, whether they're okay to go for another 10 minutes. This is totally engaging. Um, we're, we're, pa we're 45 minutes, but... Um, uh, are they all Time. willing to keep painting? Yeah, it's fine. Somebody said, yeah, yeah. fine. That's <laughs> funny. And I just saw a thumb. Bonnie I just saw yes. a thumb saying yes from Sim. So let's, let's just keep going for another 10 minutes, I think. Yeah. Okay, well. Um... So, so you see that that, that that composition was in Sim's mind before she even started. That's a wonderful to see, actually. Yeah, composition is so important. Oh, darn. And here we are, back at Bonnie's. Okay. Are okay, you, are you, I see are Bonnie's. You? I see oh, Bonnie's. Okay. Yeah, no, this is good. Okay. Ah, uh, see, some of those colors are like because one's still wet, one shape to the left of where she's painting and where she is. Some of those colors will just mingle unless she, uh, yep, there she wants it to mingle. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So she'll leave that area nice and dry and then the softening of the edge so it doesn't do a starburst through some of them. Beautiful work, Bonnie. I didn't notice anybody tonight, you know, have a hunk of paper towel in there. I mean, they were away for uh, six minutes each every time we left them, but I didn't see anybody tonight with paper towel in one hand so that so that they uh, they put down some color and then give it a quick dab i know no, I do not do one that some, unless I they did it off screen there. maybe yeah that's what i mean yeah they they were gone for six minutes so we may, we may have missed that but uh, I, a lot of people do just keep it's yeah. like having, like having a kleenex in your hand you know it's just ready uh, at the at the 
at the first opportunity you need it. It's not something you you use all the time, but it just yeah. look, at, look um, at that. Look what, at what's that. nice there too is when we watch how uh, Bonnie actually grabs her board and she lifts it so that the colors move uh, through the water. This is uh, what I do uh, as well, where I'm mixing the colors on on the. Uh, actual paper, lifting the board, moving, oh, look at the nice shape she's getting in there with just through her, the use of her brush. That looks like, a, you can't really tell, but it looks like a nice flat uh, synthetic Curry's brush with the clear handle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I love, like those brushes. Uh, yeah, I love those brushes. Yeah, yeah my favorite brushes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there, there, she's going to still wet you can float that through too i bet you i've got a hundred brushes and then you reduce yourself to a few that you really like you, do, Isn't you don't that know the truth yeah. yeah you don't know what you really like until you've tried a load of them but at, you keep going but because of the way you paint you keep going back to the same darn brush and it's like <laughs> <laughs> i know I, it's I, true I must isn't like it this brush oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no it's true yeah. Look at that. That's nice. I just it's so much fun to uh and now yeah. we're back at Barbara's and I can see this. It's uh, it's a bit fuzzy on my screen. Just a little bit, but we can still get yeah. an idea. There. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Oh, I nice. the rhythm and uh it looks like uh, she's, you know, where the shapes of the paper with the holes, the paper, the, the strips of the edge of the note yeah. paper. She softened that now with, uh, with and repetition of some of those golden colors. And now. I wonder she if she do? decides before she starts there, Bob, I wonder, do you decide, okay, Tonight, I'm going to use um, sort of light pinky purple, some orange and some blue and some black. Uh, do you decide that before you, or is it something that just moves you as you go through the painting? Oh, yeah, she did. The, yeah, I, I, I decided. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but sometimes I, I add, a, 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 sometimes the color speaks to me and, and I, I kind of add it in after. Yeah. And, uh, and, some, and sometimes when you add a color, all of yeah. a sudden, the whole composition sings, right? Great, great, great. So exactly. what, tell us what you're doing right now, Barbara, and oh. the type of uh, eraser that you're using. Yeah, it's a, a magic pickup eraser. And you, yeah. use, yeah. It, you use it for um, if you put down some masking fluid. So I just added a bit of masking fluid earlier and let it dry. And then now I'm picking it up. So I just have a few lines in here that I want to, to keep. Yeah. yeah. For, for me, for me, I just put down a few lines here and there, and it's kind of the magic of revealing them after. It's just another layer that's added into the painting. And if you don't like that layer, then you can just paint over it. Exactly, that's was awesome. And I think if, if people are sort of learning a bit as we go along here, they, I used to use that masking fluid. And uh, what I find is dangerous stuff. If you use masking fluid, take it off the same day you use it. Yeah, you can ruin your paper. Yeah. You yeah. wait a week, you wait a week and you've wrecked your painting. It, get, it gets right. into the fiber and then, then you, you can't get it off or it leaves a yellow stain or whatever. Yeah. Just take it, take it off the same day you use it. Yeah, I, I usually use it for uh, actually when I'm doing my urban sketching. I like sketching yeah. with it and then just adding a layer of, of watercolor over top of it. And so do you, do you use a uh, do you use a straight pen to to, yeah. to draw I, with it? I use one of these. It's like a, a pen, a masking fluid. Oh, oh okay. I've never seen that. Yeah. No, wow. I Santa can bring it to you. <laughs> Are you I, we used to worry about putting it in our brushes. You know how to get it out of your brush? Yeah, get a, right. <laughs> get, a, get, a, get a bottle of ammonia. Oh, God. Yeah. It'll wash it out of your brush, as long as you don't leave it there. But, I mean, it'll wash it out of your brush right. immediately. I usually, I usually dip my dry. brush. No, I usually dip my brush in um, 
dish detergent first uh -huh. and then yeah. uh, dry it off the brush. And there's enough dish detergent to repel the, uh, to the masking fluid so oh, that yeah. when you're done, you can just go and wash it and it comes off nice and easy. Right, right. And if you don't, it dries and you've got a drumstick instead of a paintbrush. <laughs> <right? laughs> yeah. And this is my signature right here. Oh, you put your signature oh, on the beginning. Look at that. Awesome. Yeah. With that cool pen that yeah. you're going to let me look at when I maybe sure. tease you with a little bit of that masking tape. And here's my big wet cloth that you guys were talking about. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know what? Be, be, before, before everybody goes and before you three fine artists who've done the work here, I, I just want to say personally that I learned quite a few things tonight. That's a very so interesting, uh, very interesting deal looking at some work and thinking about it as it's being done. Yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. And you know what, this again, as uh, we were talking before, a good, a wonderful celebration of how every, different people approach how, how people approach their art differently. And uh, there we go. Whoa, wow. there's the bird I didn't see before. Oh, yeah. that's gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. I bet you soon does the same poetic. thing. I bet she stands it up on the back of the couch trying to decide whether it's done. Oh, probably, eh? I, I would think so too. Oh, yeah. Standing from yeah. a distance, you know, if that, again, back to that rhythm, if, if you can yeah. see that rhythm, if you can dance through the painting with your eyes. Nice stuff. Now she was giving us a message there. I'm not sure what, but moving her hands across it. Does she feel she's finished? Maybe close. No. She's thinking about it. Right? But it's so. very poetic. She, um, she has a really nice quote when, when I was talking to her, a really nice quote. And uh, she said, I am a beginner as I learn and discover new things each day. It shall remain this way for the rest of my journey. For this, I am grateful. And, you know, that's a really wonderful uh, a quote of, of, of her own. Because as Peter was, say, was saying, you know, we all learn as we as we go with a lot of things and maybe if we approach a lot of things as beginners we can look at things with fresh eyes and uh, see things with with a, a, a brand new light and, and reach some aha moments that uh, yeah oh I didn't know it would do that and it's just taking you each painting taking you into another level of of, uh, of discovery Wow. Look, look at those beautiful. Is, now like, she uses for the, and she goes into the birds with a phthalo blue and the same reds as the flowers, um, burnt sienna here and there in the branches. Uh, which, uh, beautiful. Oh, and she says only if it's very dark. She uses ultramarine mixed in with the greens. Yes, it's very interesting. Hi, everyone. Oh, it, it is, is done. done. Yay. <laughs> Beautiful. Very yeah. poetic. Yeah. Very nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Sim. Yeah. That was Very wonderful. Good. And thank you, Bob. Yes. And thank you, Bonnie. Oh, oh some darker blues coming in there now. Yeah. Wow. And Bonnie's going to bring it home. Bonnie's going to yeah. bring it home. And that's something too to think about with reflections. Uh, uh, like I, sometimes you look at a painting and wonder, what's going on with this painting? And uh, you look at the reflections. Like reflections always come to you, and uh, this is what she's doing right now. The reflections are coming to her rather than going to the side. You know, for example, yeah. the, and yeah. the reflections come to you. Mm -hmm. That's neat. I think we're all going to want to paint tonight. <laughs> that's that's me. Whenever I do anything like this, I go. Oh, oh I know. Yeah. It's not finished. I'm not by a lot. And with, uh, with all the artists, I think we've gradually seen the white disappearing. You know. 
It's great. It's and a at the same time saving weights. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just gradually eating away at it so that you keep the highlights. You know, looking for the rhythm of the darks that we were talking about earlier with Barbara Uguchi's painting. It's also looking for the rhythm of the lights. You know, mm -hmm. how, how does your eye dance through the painting, through the lights? And then you can look at midtones as the meandering. I'm gonna meander here. And you know, where your focal point lies, often you will find a little stronger contrast between the lights and the darks as a, a little bit of drama comes. So, you know, moving into the painting, meandering through the midtones and, and uh, discovering contrasts. Yeah, see, that's really punctuation now. That's, that's nice. That's, that's, <laughs> I that's love working. that. I, that's another way of looking at it. I, it's I uh, yeah. yeah. This world. An exclamation marks. Yeah. Turn them on very nicely. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this. You wonder uh, how it's all going to work out when it's something new like that. But I, I could uh, sit and listen to people chat about paintings as they're being done. Yeah, I'll Again, have a great and, time listening to somebody else talk about mm -hmm. it. You know, sometimes you think, oh, well, I, I, I don't think that's what's happening. Or, or you think, yeah, that's a different way of looking at it. But it's always interesting hearing uh, you know, different, different people's discoveries as they're watching, as they're doing, as they're exploring. It's all about exploring, isn't it? It is a lot of the time, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, yeah. And it, you as can, Doreen just wrote, all three were fabulous. All three are, are fabulous and, uh, yeah. and very different. Yeah. And, and that's what's neat. Everyone has a different way. Yeah. Just like our fingerprints are different. Our voices are different. Yeah, I can walk into a TWS show now and say, uh, oh, that's a Hal built, you know, he just, yeah. you know. A fingerprint. Right? Yeah, that's a Margaret Roseman. Like, he just know immediately. Yeah. Right? If, you're, just... if you're honest and true to, to what you're doing, you will have a signature in your work. I'm yeah. going to go through one more look at each one. So. Hooray, Barb, yeah. here you go. Good, yeah. Barb's ready. Well, look now, Barb's got picture in picture. Barb, where you been all this time? <laughs> look at that. <laughs> now yeah. she's getting fancy, although it does yeah. block the corner of the painting. Yeah. So Still, it's cool to see how messy there we go. Uh, palette now is. we're looking at yeah, Barb's. It's great mess. Yeah, I like yeah. that. The color yeah. wheel palette is kind of fun to have, you know. And there's Barb's. So. Yeah. Clapping for Barb. Yay, Barb. Guys, lots of fun. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yay. There we go. Going to go and check out Sim. Here we come, Sim. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Another one for the show, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then, you know, uh, if, uh, yeah. if we all have a little mat as we're painting, sometimes it gives us that nice little finished feel and go, oh, you know, there was one time I finished a painting and someone said, oh, you're still working on that. And so I, I in my head, I'm thinking, I think it's done. And then I, <laughs> I, I framed it and, and uh, matted it and framed it. And they said, oh, it's done. I didn't do anything <laughs> else to it. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes it, it, it just helps. Needs a finishing touch. And yeah. then I know you're not done, Bonnie, mm -hmm. but. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful great, work yeah. in progress. Yeah. Great. Yeah, very free and feels chilly like chilly like it does actually yeah all right so yeah. now we're gonna just where is my little friend doug doug you're on okay wow i really enjoyed this group painting process and the excellent commentary i want to thank barb Gucci, sim wong Bonnie Steinberg for their generous contribution to making this holiday party so engaging and informative. Um, the 45 minutes passed in no time at all. And I think this pro process has a lot of promise. I also want to thank Peter and Rain Tunley who helped make this painting demonstration into a unique and wonderful event. Your commentary was just great. 
Um, and all five of you will be receiving an appreciation gift for your involvement by email in the coming days. So that's the end of it. And we can now get on with the next sharing event, the door prizes. To withdraw a name one at a time from this bowl, every member's name is in it. I'll read it out loud, show it on the screen, and then wait for the member to contact Heather via chat. Or if Heather corrects me, um, you actually, I, I'm going to, and so that you can shout out your name and uh, express the happiness of getting one of the prizes. Yes. So there'll be eight gift cards drawn. And if no one comes forth to claim that the particular uh, door prize that I've drawn out within a minute, I'll go on and withdraw another name out of the bowl. Um, and the last draw out of the uh, will be a member's name for a free annual membership. So hang tight. So let's get the, the thing under going here. Hold on here. All right. So no sleight of hand here, guys. Gail George. Is she here? Annette Hansen. Let's I hope I don't have to go through 270. I don't see Annette. Okay. So I'm just going to keep that in order in case she suddenly comes out. So I'm drawing another name. Okay. I'm also searching the names in the participant box. Okay. Uh, Mo Mojin Kamyab? Oh, Mo. Jenny Reed. Jenny's here. Yeah. I saw her. Yes, I'm here. What okay. There she is. Great. This is being recorded. So <laughs> there you go, Jenny. $20 Thanks. gift certificate. Michaels. Do a happy dance. The first winner. <laughs> oh. Jenny Verona. Verona. Oh. Yes. That's Kathy? Carney, right? Oh, where is she? There she is. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Thank yeah. you. There you go, Cammy. Twenty dollars. Beautiful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Ah, let's see. Gail Bacchus. Gail, I don't think there's any Gales here. Yeah. Go ahead. Gail. Okay. Oh, Gail is. Oh, the other Gail over there with Ed, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. There she is. Thank you. Need all the gift certificate. Woohoo! Fantastic. Good. You got one. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Ah, okay. Who's this guy? Doug. He doesn't get it. Okay. <laughs> ah, let's see. Carol Walters. There is she a did. Carol here, but I don't know what Nancy's is Carol. shaking her, or nodding her head. Is this? Hold on. Let me just go over here. She doesn't have her camera on. Carol, is that you? Carol Walters was here. There is a Carol here, but no camera on. Okay. So I don't Carol know who Walters. it is. So she's here. She's yeah. still on screen, so say so. I'm just going to set this aside. Officially, she's got it. Okay. Carol's so, unmuted. You could say hi, Carol. No. I know Perry Chow is here. Perry, is Perry Yay! still here? Hey. Your $20 Thank gift you. certificate. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and Perry's in the wilderness. Yeah. So. We now have two $30 gift certificates and Krista von Engelbrecken. Yes, that's me. Oh, there she is. I'm here. <laughs> she, her video is off, but she's here. Oh, how do I turn my video on? Um, you're on an iPhone, so I can't help you. I'm on an iPhone. Okay, <laughs> down at the bottom there. Hello. <laughs> here, wait, 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 wait. Let me do this. Wait, wait. Let's see. 
There she Hi, is. Hey. There you are, Christine. Krista. Thank you. Yeah, that's great okay. news. I'm a new member. This is my first year. I only got one meeting in. Well, that doesn't matter. That's great. And now you got a prize. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Oh. Ha -ha. Suzanne Payne. Is she here? She must I'm be here. here. I'm here. There she is. Thirty dollars. Well, thank you ones. so much. Thank you. That's wonderful. Okay. Now we have a fifty dollar one. So I'm gonna list. Yeah. Fifty dollar gift certificate for Mike Schult. He's here. Oh Ooh. yeah, he is. Thank you very much. Very much. There okay. he is. Hooray. So now, drum roll, we have a free membership. I'm going to stir this up really, really well. And there you go. Margaret Jameson. Margaret um, is um, a lifetime member. <laughs> okay. Doesn't need it. <laughs> Doesn't need it. <laughs> Thanks, Suzanne. <laughs> You're welcome. Kathy Gifford. Kathy Gifford. Who's here? Kathy wasn't here. She yeah. is here. Doesn't she? Uh, I have her here, right here. There Kathy. she is. Yay, Kathy! A membership. Free membership. Aren't you the luckiest? You're muted, Kathy. <laughs> Unmute yourself. You have to unmute. She's trying. She's trying to figure it out. <laughs> She's like, video, uh, unmuting. Um, I don't think I can unmute you. Sorry. Uh, What's that? What's that? Kathy declines it. She wants to give it away. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to keep it. I think she wants to keep it. We just can't hear. Her. Unmute. Okay, you're unmuted now, but now she's frozen. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> now she's muted again. Kathy, what are you doing? <laughs> well, I can't do it either way. I keep yeah. There you go. Both of them. Yeah, I you're good. Here. We can hear you. <laughs> okay, well, congratulations, uh, Kathy. Hey, thank you. Read lips. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. All right, so. Thank you. <laughs> well. So that's our first ever online holiday party and uh, no one had to drive in our first significant snowfall of the season. And while we're not able to rub shoulders, we did get to see one another. Some got to talk and I hope all of you enjoyed the painting demonstration. I think we can do something in interesting variations on our monthly meetings and informal meetings even. So please send me your thoughts so that we can review and figure out how to implement some of them. On behalf of the TWS board and executive, I wish everyone a safe and healthy holiday period and that all of you can connect with family and friends and continue to paint. Goodbye. Thanks, well done. Thanks, Thank you. Happy Bye, holidays. Thank you. Oh. Bye. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Great. Thank you. Thank you.